Yeah, the great the great thing about my first year with that, you know, the 2009-2010 team, because I still to this day, I think we were the best team in the country. I don't think it was really uh, – <laughs> I know. That was tough. That one, that one breaks my heart. Um, but for me, like like getting into this side of things, like going from player to coach, that was like the most rewarding year. One of my – you know, I've had some great years since then, but to be your first year to have the group that we had, like how enjoyable that team was, how close knit it was. Mm -hmm. I was like so far or so closely removed from playing. Like I played with Andy and, and AO, you know, so to come back and now I'm, these guys are both fifth year guys and close friends. And then I meet you and, you know, that year was just, you know, for me getting into the coaching side of things like I am just so grateful that that was my first season um, just because that group was so fun to be around you know not to mention how like our, we were incredible like it was such a fun team to watch play but I, I think what people from probably our fans perspective don't understand is how fun that team was when we weren't playing you know the everyday practices you know leaving the court you know you and Andy were at my house what, like three, four nights a week coming out at night and watching TV, playing FIFA, ordering Domino's. Domino's pies, yeah. And then the <laughs> next day, it's like right back in the gym, same thing, staying for an hour after practice and getting it in. So, you know, that – I fell in love with that group. So, you know, that that was a – that's a heartbreaker that season. Yeah, I mean, AO to go down like yeah. that. Like, I mean, it was like I said, it was a sprained ankle. It's like, okay, you might be able to bounce back for the tournament, especially when we, once we get to the Sweet 16 and that uh you know regional championship round but uh to tear a quad where it just like you know his future standings you yeah know, it was it's, tough, like, it's you tough know, to pressure like, him. everyone's crying like it was bigger than you know it was a guy that gave everything he had for every minute he played there and had gone through some injuries yeah you know, and you have a chance to you know be the number one overall seed and go on and you know, potentially win a national championship. It was bigger, I think, in that moment, seeing what he did and knowing that it was severe, you know, to see the look on, on everybody's face that you know, was a part of that group that was kind of deflating. You know, yeah. Then to not have him moving forward was, you know, even a bigger issue because, you, you know, we had two different lineups. We had the big lineup, then we had the long athletic lineup. So we didn't have the luxury moving forward of playing those two different lineups. And, um, you know, he was just so solid and so big around the rim. And, um, yeah, we just happened to play. I, I think that was the worst game we played all season. Ah, and we happened to run into Butler the first yeah. year. Like, Brad Stevens and Gordon Haywood and the rest of that squad were just like – that, that game, too, it just seemed like nothing went right for us either. Yeah. You know, the silly turnovers, the sloppiness. We were still in the game, and we just couldn't pull it out. And it was just – We played as poorly as we could. And then, you know, when we tried to press late, we were still there. We just couldn't – like, it was one shot, one rebound, one turnover. You know, we just couldn't. Yeah, that one haunts. I know it does you, but that's – that was a tough one. I remember going back to the hotel, and I remember the locker room after the game was, like – it was, like, so heartbreaking. Like, it was complete silence. Mm -hmm. Like, people crying. Like, no one said a word because yeah. it was just – like, that team was so fun. The fact that it ended right there – no one could believe it because it's just not what we envisioned. We envisioned cutting those nets down. I know that. I know that for a fact. Um, you know, but I remember going back to the hotel and I knocked, you know, I, I didn't have a room key. I probably dropped it in the bus or something. <laughs> I went into the room and I knocked on the door because, you know, Katie was up in the room and I knocked on the door and she, as soon as she opened the door, I just started crying. Like I was like, I can't believe that we just lost. You know, that team, was, I'm telling you, man, I'm, I'm like forever grateful that that was my first season because that's like the goal every year. Like, you got to be as close-knit as that. You know, I've been around some special groups. That's – that one's up there. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> even after AO went down, um, we still got the fourth number one seed. So it wasn't yeah. like the worst situation possible, but – We got to go out west. Yeah, you had the Salt Lake. That place mm -hmm. is so salty in my mind. Um, but yeah. a actually the moment that was – the toughest one was like the 11, 12 when Fab went out and I, I maybe because it was my senior year, but like after, I think when we were down to Ohio state, we went down like by five, like 73, 78 under a minute left. I had that moment you had where it was fighting back tears and it's like, 
I am not crying on this court and being a part of some CBS montage. Like later, Brandon, like hold it. Cause like for me, it was the moment like, oh shit, college is over. Like now this moment, there's nothing else after. And it's like, all right, what's the next plan in life? Cause you haven't really set out and you haven't really thought about it as intently because you're 21, 22 years old. You're no one has, no, (laughs) no one has, you know, that, 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 that to me, honestly, Reese is the worst you just said salty. That's yeah. probably the saltiest I am about any game we've ever played. I felt like I felt like Jared Sullinger's, I think it was his second foul in the first half was bogus and it was a bad call. And I felt like the next however many minutes, whether it be, you know, twenty five minutes of the game was spent trying to make up for it. And I'm not one to criticize, but there there's there's very few games that of the 10 years I've been back as a coach that I can remember being like, what's going on? (laughs) Hold the phone. (laughs) You know, that's one of them. Like that was just, I felt like for 20 some minutes, it was like, we're trying to make up for, yeah, we messed that one up. I mean, it was crazy that not even did we have, we had two big 10 teams in a row in a sweet 16 into the elite eight. We had Wisconsin, that was, a great, that was a great game. That was one of the best college basketball games I've ever been a part of. It was a nuts game. I mean, I remember even – I forgot who the guard was. He put up a shot at the end, and it was like – I mean, just – there it is, 50-50 ball going up in the air. That drops, we're out, and he misses it. And it was just like – I had that scout too, and I remember I was screaming, stand on the left, because we had scouted it all week. Like, listen, late in the shot clock, he's going to go to his left hand. And he's going to use the hezzy. He's going to try to freeze you. He's going to pull. So when it got down to like the last play of the game, I remember just standing up screaming as loud as I could. Frank, remember, I think Kaminsky, was it Frank Kaminsky came in? Mm-hmm. Was it his freshman year, I think, and hit. And I'm sitting there. I got the scout. I'm like, all right, well, wh- <laughs> who's this cat and why is he doing this right now? <laughs> you know, I'm pretty sure it was Kaminsky. Uh, but that was a great college basketball game. 